Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Saturday, June 4th, 2022, and today we're going to be talking about the state of Michigan after their Supreme Court decides to land a major blow to the Republican Party, refusing to overturn what the Board of Elections ruled as invalid signatures and an inability to get on the ballot for the Republican frontrunner James Craig, the former Detroit police chief. Now, this decision comes yesterday from the Michigan Supreme Court. We'll talk a bit more about it, but you might remember this case from just a week ago when I talked about how the Board of Elections made a decision that five Republican candidates needed to be removed from the Republican primary due to invalid signatures. Now, the way it works in the state of Michigan is that you need 15,000 valid and legal signatures to end up on the ballot. In a state with millions of residents, that shouldn't be too difficult to see or to see happening whatsoever, especially for some of these top Republicans. And two of the best performing Republicans found themselves in a pickle when they employed a group and organization that went and actually forged signatures. Not only did they not get the signatures from the required amount of people, but they actually made people up. In some cases, according to the Board of Elections, you found the same signature used across an entire page with the same ink and the same handwriting for tens of people. So when you see things like that happening and you hear it straight from the Board of Elections, they also mention that this is something that they have never seen before. While election fraud may not necessarily be new in United States history, in the state of Michigan, they said they have never seen anything to this level of fraud or illegitimacy in a Republican primary ballot. And as a result, they decided that they were going to throw out the candidacy of these five Republicans who otherwise should have been on the ballot in maybe another state where there wasn't a uh, requirement for signatures. But at the end of the day, the decision was made by the Board of Elections, but then James Craig sort of uh, decided to move forward to some other uh, avenues to see if his decision can be appealed. Some Republicans, upon being disqualified, immediately dropped out of the race, and by the end of it, only two Republicans actually pursued further action to the Michigan Supreme Court. Now, a decision was actually reached just a few days ago on June 1st, and this was from the, uh, not the statewide Supreme Court, but the Michigan Court of Appeals. And they said that there does not need to be any type of change in the way that the decision was made from the elections board. James Craig wasn't arguing that his signatures were valid, but rather that the elections board needed to go line by line. But the elections board said that because 50% plus of his signatures were invalid, they didn't need to go line by line, especially when you had the same signature utilized for every single person on just one page. When you saw things like that, the Board of Elections pushed back and said, we don't want to go line by line. We know these are illegitimate. So James Craig said, nope, you need to follow Michigan state law. You need to go line by line. At the end of the day, though, there is a very low uh, chance that going line by line would have changed the outcome of this. And the Board of Elections knows that. They invalidated over 15,000 signatures for James Craig alone. He ended up with just under 11,000 valid signatures and legal signatures throughout this. Again, he is the former Republican frontrunner for the governorship. And there's a reason that this is so shocking because he should have been easily on this ballot. This should not even have been any type of concern for the Michigan governor's race. So the Court of Appeals decided to uphold the decision that was made by the Board of Elections. James Craig, along with another Republican, decided to pursue further and go to the Michigan State Supreme Court. It says here in uh, a press release from his group and from his campaign that Chief James Craig is disappointed with the Court of Claims decision, but will continue his fight to the state Supreme Court. Well, yesterday, in a decision of 6 to 1, the Michigan Supreme Court leaves both James Craig and Johnson off of the ballot for this uh August primary. So this is the highest court that we can actually see it go to beyond maybe the United States Supreme Court. It's very unlikely that they ever meddle in this type of circumstance. The damage also is already done. The James Craig campaign starts off and is already viewed as illegitimate and one that is founded on fraud and um, fake signatures. These are things that are really hard to shake from your candidacy, really hard to shake from your campaign, and it makes him look illegitimate in the truest sense. Even if he was to be reinstated on the ballot by a decision from the Michigan Supreme Court, it gets very difficult for him to go to the general election and make an argument that what had happened wasn't his fault. What had happened was the fault of the organization that he employed. But at the end of the day, he still employed them, and he still fought through this. Now, 
Uh, James Craig has also floated the idea of potentially going to uh, move towards a write-in campaign for this Republican primary. Realistically, we just don't see that happening. If you take a look at the chances here and the ratings, well, on the 90-day scale, let's go ahead and add in James Craig. Craig was at you know 75 cents, 80 cents, according to the political betting markets, hovering around the 50s. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you know, following all of these decisions coming out, he dropped dramatically. And in the most recent numbers, he's at just one cent, despite him trying to argue that he could make a viable case to run a write-in campaign. If you take a look at the, this is the, what I will show you in just a moment. If you take a look at the Republican primary polling data, you find that James Craig, in terms of the overall average, is ahead by about 17 points. He's the only candidate here, along with Perry Johnson, who are in double digits, that, uh, and Garrett Saldano. The rest of them are all in single digits. Now, the favorite to win the race is Tudor Dixon. She is at 2.5% in pre-disqualification uh, you know, polls. But because we are now in a position where there really are no frontrunners and Donald Trump needs to choose someone to win this nomination, people very much expect it to be Tudor Dixon. Uh, James Craig at 29%, though, shows that he was the... Uh, best candidate, I would say, within this Republican primary, he was going to do well. And in the most recent polls, as you can see, the votes have very much been spread out and split up to the remaining candidates, but there also isn't a very clear consensus. The front runner there is at 19% when they were at 5% in the poll prior to this qualification. James Craig had led in every single poll from September 2021 through May of 2022 until the decision was ultimately reached. Now, looking at the hypothetical polling data, there was a potential possibility that John James decides to run for governor instead of House. John James is running for House in a Biden district, but it is a competitive district. He ran for Senate in 2018. He ran for Senate again in 2020. There was a slight uh, moment of consideration for the GOP to run him for governor, but ultimately he decided against it. Now, looking at the data, he might have beaten James Craig, but James Craig still put up at least a relatively good fight. Uh, John James is a recognizable name across the state of Michigan, and the fact that James Craig got him down to a point where the margin of victory for John James was about 15 points when James had been nominated twice for a statewide elected position means that James Craig at least had some level of name recognition already and was likely going to do well in this primary. Now that he's out of the question, there is no guarantee that he ends up even on the ballot. He might try to run an independent campaign. I really don't see that happening. But this decision from the Michigan Supreme Court makes it impossible for Craig to return. In fact, the last ever press release from his campaign was about the statewide Supreme Court saying that they were going to fight for this, that they were going to go to the state of Michigan and try to make the decision overturned. And they have been absolutely silent since. So it looks as if they are realizing that their efforts need to end, that they need to stop their campaign for governor, but also there is no guarantee that they decide to do that. What I know so far is that the Michigan Supreme Court made this decision also without an idea of partisanship. And what do I mean by that? Well, one might argue, you know, the Michigan Supreme Court is a Democratic-controlled court. Only of recently, though, Democratic-controlled as of 2021 in an election that occurred in 2020, it flipped from the Republican Party. Republicans had the majority in the Michigan Supreme Court for quite some time. And, you know, the Board of Elections is, is ran by a Democratic Secretary of State. It is ran by two Democrats, two Republicans. And together, they all reached a conclusion that these Republicans should not be on the ballot. But like I mentioned previously, this decision was six to one. The composition of the Michigan Supreme Court is four to three, Democrats to Republicans. There are four Democrats and three Republicans. And what you see here is that these three Republicans are a three Democrat. These four Democrats are all ones that were elected statewide. Uh, you have the uh, three Republicans who were appointed by Rick Snyder. And the interesting thing about this altogether is that Every single Republican sided with the decision to get rid of James Craig and Perry Johnson on the ballot this August. The only dissenter from this decision was a Democrat. It was a Democrat, not a Republican, which tells us that this six to one decision largely came across bipartisan lines. Three Democrats, three Republicans joining together to say, hey, we are not going to uh, approve of these candidates being on the ballot. They're going to, they pretty much ruled that the Board of Elections did not need to do anything different. 
that fraud was committed, and it pretty much solidifies election legitimacy within the state of Michigan. I know the Republican Party has been very big on trying to secure elections and trying to lock them down, the same thing that James Craig is still currently running on, but it's ironic that the party that is in this position, that is in this troubled time, is the Republican Party. The party that claims to be for election integrity is now the party, at least, from the eyes of James Craig and Perry Johnson to commit the election fraud. So that's also another reason why I would say it doesn't look good for the GOP as they head into this November. And opinion polling data already seems to tell us that the Republicans are in a bit of trouble. Looking at the uh, race here, let's go ahead and go down to the opinion polling data within the state of Michigan. There were polls taken by Target Insight that were taken just days after the disqualification. And they find that Gretchen Whitmer maintains 57, 58% of the vote across the state. In fact, against all of these five potential GOP candidates, she wins in every single poll. But when you take a look at numbers between Gretchen Whitmer and James Craig, it was about even. There were some numbers that had Gretchen Whitmer ahead, and there were others that had James Craig ahead. The point being that there was clearly one GOP candidate that was competitive and electable, and they can no longer be on the ballot. For the remaining Republicans here, they seem to be losing by high levels of proportions. And also, I will say that while I don't know if she's going to win 58 or 57 percent of the vote, there is something to be said about her ability to capture that percentage within a poll. I don't think the Republicans are going to get 21 or 23 percent of the vote. But what I do think is that this is driven by low name recognition for Republicans and also a disdain in general for the GOP following this scandal outside of the Republican Party. Gretchen Whitmer has name ID in Michigan. That can make up for the 46, 50 percent that she has gotten in recent polls. But to be at 58 percent is very impressive. Typically speaking, when you see name recognition for candidates, they hover around the low 40s, and if they're an incumbent, the low 50s. But to be at 58% tells us that there are voters out there that are saying, I recognize Gretchen Whitmer's name, and I'm going to vote for her because of X, Y, and Z. In all of the other polls, while they still said they were going to vote for her, it was never to this extent. 46% is believable, 50% is believable, but following this scandal that emerged from the GOP, 58% might not necessarily be believable, but it also could be as a result, be a result of this scandal that emerged from the Republican Party. You see, I find it very difficult to see how she does end up winning by, you know, in this case, 27 percentage points. But I can imagine that she does win the Michigan governor's race because of this decision. James Craig was very clearly the strongest GOP candidate that they could have put up. There's a reason why the now favorite to win the GOP nomination is only at 2.5%. Because what the Republican Party is left with is just the B-tier candidates. And not to say that the race can't narrow up. I think we could see a complete revitalization in support for the GOP as a result of the red wave or a result of you know a pushback on President Biden. But what I do think is that the Republican Party was in a much better position a month ago than they are right now in the state of Michigan. And that's why I have moved the state of Michigan to being a likely Democratic state in my most recent projection. I think Gretchen Whitmer could win by five to six percentage points, especially after winning by about 10 points across the state in 2018. She has room to fall. The GOP has a lot of ground to make up. It gets very difficult to see how the GOP ends up recovering from this, especially when they can't even decide on a nominee. It looks as if the Michigan GOP is going to be struggling right now to find a clear consensus as to who they want to see. Not a single one of these candidates here are recognizable across the state or have high levels of name recognition. And of those who potentially could have ran before the deadline, the Republicans had a very significant list. You had John James. You had many people on here. Just take a look at them and see where they are. U.S. representatives former speakers of the Michigan House of Representatives. You had conservative commentators. You had state senators, state representatives. You had people that served in the Trump administration. Yet in this declared primary, who do you have? A conservative media personality, a planning commissioner, a pastor, a businessman, and a chiropractor. So what do we see from this? No political experience besides maybe Ryan Kelly. And beyond that, No one of importance across the state. Democrats, on the other hand, have a mildly popular governor, sometimes, sometimes not, but they also benefit from this tremendously because it makes the Republican Party look bad and they have effectively seen themselves stripped away 
of their strongest and most electable candidates backed up not by one decision, not by a second decision, but by also the Michigan Supreme Court in a third and final blow to James Craig and Perry Johnson for the 2022 election cycle. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2022 governor election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later today.